Corporate finance practice problem using Excel. Dividends versus investment analysis. Get ready. It's time to take our chance with corporate finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you have access to the Excel worksheet, we'd like to follow along. Note that we're in the practice tab as opposed to the example tab. The example tab in essence being an answer key. We have the information on the left-hand side. We're going to populate that into the blue area on the right-hand side. In essence, taking a look at two different scenarios, meaning one, we take the earnings that we have and the available cash that we have. We reinvest it uh, into the company and get a return on it. Or we take that money and we pay it out in the form of dividends. What then will be the impact on the stock price? Remember that when we're talking about the stock price, we're talking about something that's not determined internally, but is going to be determined by the market. So it will de be dependent on the market's perceptions of our actions, meaning if we were to take the money, put it back in the company to generate growth, we would be increasing the equity of the company, which could be thought of positively from the stockholders because then they're going to have an increased value in the company, hopefully increasing the value of or the price of the stock, which would then be reflected in the price. But at the same time, the stockholders might value the dividends to be paid out. We might be in a type of industry where the stockholders want the dividends to be paid out and they might rather value the stock higher if we were to show the dividend payments rather than retaining the, the money in the corporation. So there's a bit of speculation when we on the company side are thinking about what the best strategy would be with regards to the stock price, which will be determined by the market. So we have the earnings here. We're going to say are the eight, 816,000, the shares outstanding. We're going to say are the 300,000 price earnings ratio or the PE ratio at the $20. We have the cash and we can invest this cash or pay out the cash. And this is where our decision making process will be of that cash, the 440. Do we want to keep that, put it back into the business where we think we can earn 14% on it, our rate of return, or do we want to take that cash and pay it out in the form of dividends? So if the funds invested, the PE ratio will not change. So we're going to assume then if we reinvest the funds, then the price earnings ratio that uh, that we're, we're looking at will basically remain the same. If the funds are paid out in dividends, the PE ratio will increase. So the comparison between the, the PE ratio is going to increase if we give out the dividends and our assumption there is because the investors prefer the dividends over the retained earnings over than keeping the money they, they value us distributing the dividends for this particular industry so that's going to be our assumptions here let's let's run the number let's first think about a situation where they reinvest the earnings so if they reinvest the earnings we're going to say that uh, we have our starting earnings let's think think about our our earnings let's say starting or beginning earnings are at then this 816 then we're going to assume we invest the cash so the cash invested which we're going to say is going to be this uh, 440 investment of the cash we have the return on investment which is going to be we're saying 14 percent. so that's going to be increasing our income we're going to say then number group underline it font group underline now we could of course have some more complexity with regards to the taxes here so we're, we're not going to be including a tax impact at this point we're going to say just basically looking at the return here the 14 percent that's going to give us our added uh, earnings which is going to be equal to the 440,000 times the 14 percent that's going to give us the 61.6 so the earnings after investment income is going to then be equal to let's do the good old trusty sum some function of these two items underlining the 61.6 by going to the font group and underline so then we could take a look at our earnings per share then the earnings per share is going to be the earnings that we just calculated now then being adjusted for the investment and the 14 percent return at the 8776 then we have the shares outstanding so the shares outstanding being then the 300,000 at the shares outstanding. Let's underline that by going to the font group and underline. That's going to give us our earnings per share. Earnings per share, which is going to be equal to the 8776 divided by the 300,000. Adding a couple decimals, number group, couple decimals, that giving us the 2.93, the 2.93. Now we can calculate the market price. So we're going to pick up the price earnings ratio. So the price earnings ratio, so the PE ratio, 
which we said was 20. And remember the price earnings ratio, we're comparing basically the, the price compared to the earnings, just like what it would sound like. So you might first write out what you would consider the price earnings ratio to be and kind of back in then to the stock price instead of basically memorizing the stock price with by using the price earnings ratio. In other words, you might first write down algebraically price earnings ratio is going to be equal to the market price divided by the earnings and the earnings per share. So on a per share basis earnings. So we're going to pick up then the the earnings per share and then we're going to adjust it algebraically. So so then you can kind of solve for the unknown. This is what it would look like. So if we're calculating it out after adjusting that calculation for the price earnings ratio, solving for the price as the unknown. We're going to add a couple decimals and then let's underline it. Font group and underline. That'll give us the good old stock price which is going to be equal to the 20 times the 2.93 adding a couple decimals number group couple decimals there and we're at the 58 uh, 51 so we assumed once again that the price earnings ratio is going to to remain the same we have a we have a change then on the earnings basically if we have the investment uh, that's going to go back in in but we're going to say the price earnings ratio is going to basically remain the same. Then let's think about the situation where we give out the dividend, which we're saying that the stockholders value and that'll have an increase in the price earnings ratio of the uh, 10%. If the funds are paid, it'll increase by the 10%. Okay, so let's do that. We're going to say the earnings then are not going to change. We're just going to keep them at the 816, our baseline earnings. The, the uh, earnings per share then, we're going to take the earnings, the earnings, and that's going to be equal to the 816,000. We have the shares that are outstanding, outstanding shares. These are outstanding shares. And that's going to be the earnings per share. I only deal with shares that are outstanding. And what? Okay, so we're going to go to the home tab, font group, and underline. Then let's go ahead and uh, re do the division problem. This is the 816,000 divided by the 300,000. That's going to give us our earnings per share number group, adding a couple decimal at the 2.72. Then we can calculate our price. But to do so, we got the same calculation we did down here. But now we're saying the price earnings ratio is going to increase by that 10% due to the fact that the stockholders value the distribution of the dividend. So the price earnings ratio starting point, the PE was at the 20. And then we're going to say it's going to increase by one. I'm going to say one plus the increase in PE. So it's going to increase by 10%. So I'm going to multiply it times 110% to represent both the increase and the original amount. So the 110%. So this is going to equal one plus the 10% increase, making that a percent number group percentifying at that. There we have it. Let's underline it, font group and underline it. This is going to give us the new PE ratio, which is going to be equal to the 20 times the 110%. Let's add a couple decimals. I don't think we need them here, but we'll add some pennies because we're going to need pennies below, I think. And then that's going to give us our earnings. Now let's think about our earnings per share so the earnings per share is now going to be equal to the tw the 2.72 adding a couple decimal number add a couple decimals we're going to go to the font group and underline and that'll give us then our stock price stock price which is going to then be equal to the 22 times the 2.72 and that's going to give us 60 adding a couple decimals number group adding a couple decimals we're at the 59.84 so we can see then the stock price is going to be higher here we have for the dividends that are going out even though the earnings per share are higher for uh, if we were obviously if we were going to hold on to the earnings put them back in and receive a return on it you would then expect the earnings per share uh, the earnings per share to be higher that's kind of like the internal number that would be taking place and then when you think and that's higher if we were to reinvest as opposed to giving the earnings out in dividends because we couldn't use then that cash 
to generate more more revenue now obviously this would assume that we can still get a return meaning we, we're not at that mature stay po stage possibly we, where we don't have any place where we can reinvest the cash effectively and therefore might give the dividend if we do have a place to invest the cash we're still growing we have opportunities to put the money in and we can get that return you would expect the earnings per share to be higher if we were to do that and then this last thing the stock price is going to be based in part on the market so the market for the particular industry that we are in are they valuing us putting the money back in to grow so that we can grow the equity or are they valuing the dividends to be paid out so that they have a revenue stream and get can get a return lock in a return on their investment here we said they're valuing uh, to some degree the dividends that would be distributed and that was reflected by the change in the price earnings ratio